guys, welcome back to another episode of Baking with Bob, the keto edition. What's on the menu today? I hear your ask. Well, if you haven't gathered already, it's low carb keto um, nugget bites. Um, you could compare it to like a fairground nugget or um, like this, you can make it the soft gooey nugget that you find in the middle of a lot of uh, candy treats. This one I have done only a couple of times, but I do find it quite addictive. Um, you can also, with this batch, so basically depending on the size tin that you've got for this batch, will determine how many carbs you've got per um, nugget bite. So, for example, let me just grab my sheet. The entire thing is, this is gonna, this is gonna sound a lot now, but just bear with me. The entire thing is 64 grams of carbs, but, they are super sweet and, and I have done this in a different amount of bites each time. So here we go. So for example, if I did 20 bites in the pan, that's 3.2 grams of carb per bite. If I did 40, gram, uh, 40 bites, which is what the recipe on the website actually recommends, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then it'd be 1.6 grams of carb per bite. Now, this recipe was from the dietdoctor.com, but I found that I wanted to tweak it yet again. Um, I was a bit confused by their method um, with their coconut, coconut milk but cream and how much do you use. So, like I say, I've gone straight in for coconut cream, not bothered buying the coconut tin of milk. So, if you're still with me and you <laughs> I haven't lost you yet, let's get down to it. So, what we're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, I have got a bit of a uh, sore throat today. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to leave a list in the description below of absolutely everything that you need. There are links there too, so if you don't have certain items in your local supermarket, you can buy these items through my affiliate link. And all that means is it won't cost you an extra penny, but I will make for the channel a slight tiny little profit and every little bit helps. So let's get to it. What we're going to do first? Um, oh, also don't forget if you're new to the scrap, new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of future recipes uh, that I can do. Um, so yes, back to it. So first of all, what we're going to do? First of all, we're going to get our chocolate and our butter. Pop that in the microwave on 50% power for 20 to 30 second blasts until all melted and combined. So let me do that and I'll be right back with you. So while your microwave is on and your butter and chocolate are melting together, you're going to want to get yourself about um, an eight by, I've got an eight inch square tin here. You can use uh, the bottom of a loaf tin if you like. You could use a round and then cut it up that way, it's up to you. I recommend using something rectangular or square because it makes it easier for the chopping up at the end. Okay, so my chocolate has just come out of the microwave and as you can see from the close-up camera, there's a few lumps in there. But get that all nicely mixed in together so it's all lush and smooth. Remember to scrape down your edges as well. There we go, so that is lovely and melted. So then I want you to grab your pre-lined tin that we did a minute ago and I literally just want you to pour this chocolate straight into the bottom. Once you've got all that chocolate in the bottom, you're going to want to spread it to all of the edges. You can do it with your spatula, you can roll it like I just did, but you want to try and get it done pretty quick so it doesn't set too fast. There we go, so I've got that all over. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just shake it slightly, I'm just going to hold each side there, shake it slightly to try and even out and also tap it, that gets out the air bubbles. So I think that should be about nice and even, let's just, there we go. And then what I want you to do is I want you to pop this chocolate into the fridge while we start the next step. So in that goes. Okay, so the next step is we are going to want to turn on our hob and we're going to want to add the coconut cream. So once your coconut cream is in, I'm going to want you to bring this up to a simmer and leave that to simmer just for a couple of minutes. 
Now if you can't get hold of the cartons of coconut cream, what you can do is you can buy the tins of coconut milk that don't have the emulsifier in it. It should just say coconut and water in the ingredients and don't shake the tin, open the tin and you can actually take the top layer off which is all the cream. Okay, so while that's just coming up to temperature, I'd just like to remind all you guys that if you have tried any of these recipes or you have any recommendations for me, please hit me up on the social medias that you should be able to see below now. Um, also, if you pop over to bakingwithbob.co.uk, there is a keto recommended shopping list on my website as well. Um, and bearing in mind that also has the affiliate links, so you'll be supporting the channel at no extra cost again. If you have any ideas and recommendations that you want me to try for you, uh, please pop a comment below or again hit me on the social medias. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, you may have noticed a couple of spiders in the background just because we're coming up to Halloween. What you can do is what I might try and do today if I've got enough time is I'm going to Halloweenify um, the nugget. So we're going to, you can do any colour you like, you can also change the flavour if you want. Um, but I think I might try and do green and orange. Uh, maybe or black and orange or I'll decide when I get to that point anyway but yes you can Halloweenify these you can also Christmassify them if you do them reds and greens as well so so we're, we're gonna want to add in our butter and that should help cool that down as well so add your butter in and let that melt in you're also gonna want to add your cocoa powder so one tablespoon cocoa powder and then give that a nice stirring you're also going to want to add your vanilla as well at this point that was exactly one teaspoon left in there again like I said you can use other flavours if you want to use orange or mint um, anything you like really and then stir that in What I've also done now is I've taken this off the heat and this should be fine in its own heat. Okay, now that's all nicely combined, next stage is to add the peanut butter. So we're going to want to add that next. So I'm just going to add these in one at a time. There's one. Now I've gone for the smooth peanut butter. By, by all means you can use uh, chunky if you want. Just remember to count the carbs on, on the jar. And there we go. Oh, it didn't want to come off. And then stir that in. I find using a spatula really, really does help because you can scrape down the sides and you can scrape along the bottom and then you can see what's left to stir in. So let's just keep giving that a good old mix up. It should start to form a nice, thick, gloopy batter. As you can see, it's starting to thicken now. And it has gone darker this time, actually. It didn't last time. If you find that your mixture splits, um, if you get a blender or a whisk, just whisk it up really quickly, it should come back together. Okay, so as you can see, mine has started to split. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whisk it together. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that, but the reason why mine went so dark was for some stupid reason. I um, didn't read the amount of mills that was on the back of the carton. Um, and I had the other one sat there and I only used the one. I needed 400 mil, not 250 that's on the back of the carton. So I've now added the rest of my coconut cream into my mixture and you can see it's gone a much paler chocolatey colour which is much much better. Um, and it's a very peanutty flavour so it's absolutely brilliant. Um, like I say, you can change this flavour up and you can put 
um, orange essence inside your chocolate if you wanted to or even into the nugget mixture. I've, I have experimented with caramel in there before, so, uh, sugar free uh, caramel flavouring, that went really really nicely. Um, but I think I just like the classic, the classic of chocolate and peanut nugget, it's just the best. What I want you to do is I want you to grab your chocolate back out of the fridge and then pour this over. So that chocolate you can see nice, can you see in the light? Nice and shiny and set. So I literally want you to just grab and pour. You can use your spatula to scrape out all the, the nice bottom bits. And then just like before, give it a bit of a shake to try and help it, to encourage it to go to the edges. And then into the fridge again we go. So that goes into the fridge or the freezer. You can put it in the freezer if you want to speed up the process of helping it set. Once that's set, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the first stage with the butter and the chocolate, melt it in the microwave, pour that over the top, then back into the fridge again. So once we're at that stage, I'll come straight back to you. So like I said, mine is in the fridge um, and I will be back to you. I'm going to have a bit of a just have a tidy up whilst that's setting and I'll uh, I'll be right back so see you shortly. Okay so they are in the fridge still uh, but you may have noticed I forgot one thing I forgot the Halloweeny part I forgot to put the um, the food dye into the nugget mixture but I completely forgot and it's too late because it's in the fridge um, so unfortunately I didn't get to Halloweenify um, this recipe so uh, maybe next time for the Halloween one. Sorry about that, I did completely forget and it's all my own fault, so I do apologise. Um, things happen. I'll be back when it's out of the fridge. Okay, so that has been in the fridge for about, I think it's been about 45 minutes actually. I'm now back. I have taken it out of the fridge. I have put my remaining chocolate and butter in the microwave. I'm just going to give that a quick stir now. So that all melts in nice and lovely. Now the other thing you can do, I was thinking about this whilst I was sat down. So the other thing you can do if you want to Halloweenify or Christmassify this recipe, if you don't want to colour the middle nugget, which um, is understandable, what you can do instead, there is a link in the description, you can buy the sugar-free white chocolate. And what you can do is exactly the same as what you've done with the butter, add that into the microwave, melt it down, then divide into two, or one, whatever you want to do, and then use the gel colouring to colour the white chocolate to make it your, your black and orange or your green and orange on the top. So that's just another idea for you. Okay, so once that's melted, it's the same step as before, so we are going to pour this lovely chocolate all over. Okay, and there we go. And then back into the fridge with this goes. So let's pop that back in. Actually, sorry, you're gonna to wanna to leave that in the fridge for at least an hour minimum. Um, if you want to rush this process, like I always say, pop it in the freezer, minimum 30 minutes at least, because you want it all to be nice and set. Once these are set, I want you to cut them up into the amounts that you obviously are gonna divide your carbs by. I'm gonna do mine into 30. Um, which will give me 2.1 grams of carb per bite, which is I think is absolutely amazing. And that is about it from me. I'm just trying to think if there's any other tips or tricks I can let you know of. Um, actually, yes. Now I've seen, I'm sure it was on Amazon, it could have been eBay. If I find the link, I will leave it below. You can buy some sugar-free eyes. Let me show you. So, I'm just gonna grab one of these, just so I can... Can you see? It's an eyeball. So you could technically put those into the uh, the top of the chocolate as well, if you wanted. Uh, the reason why I haven't is, I find them really hard, really solid on my teeth. Um, and I prefer my nugget to be nice and creamy. Oh, the other thing I meant to tell you, actually, is 
storage. So once you've chopped these up, pop these into an airtight container and keep them in the fridge. You can keep them frozen as well if you want to. They stay fresh for about a week in the fridge um, and they are best served chilled. If they get too warm, they can be a bit too gooey and messy in the middle. So keep them in the fridge and serve them chilled. And on that note, I am going to say goodbye this time and I'll see you next time.